We're back. <laughs> you always sound so seductive. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to seduce the audience. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a point. You don't need to do that. Your voice is already <laughs> deep enough. <laughs> so is mine. Hello. <laughs> Both of us sound like we've smoked a pack of darts this morning. Yeah. But we darts are cigarettes for you, <laughs> the people that don't know. Darius Louisa has kiwiitis. Darius, darts. <laughs> yeah, we never say that. What do we say? So... By the way, I'm Caroline Cranshaw. And I'm Louisa Delden. And we just like to talk shit. And some yes. people apparently like to listen to it. Yeah. us ramble on about bullshit. We've had a few messages saying that people like the podcast. Yeah. No hate so far. No, no hate messages. Mm. And we've had one one-star review. And that's okay. One one star review. One one star. And then the rest, I think, have been five. So that's pretty it, fucking good. Todd, my boss, left us a review. <laughs> did he? I think he may have been drunk when he did it. Oh, no. <laughs> did he say something? No, he gave us a five star, oh, but I think he may star. have wrote something. We'll oh. go back and investigate. Oh, I'll have to check. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. So what's new in your life? Um, same old, really. Just me being me, yeah. you know. <laughs> As you do. Yeah. Well, actually, do you know what is probably the most significant thing in my life at the moment? Mm -hmm. I'm nearly at the end of dry July. Can you believe that I've done it? Have you actually made it? Yes. Oh, my God. eh? Damn it. I'm losing money on my bet with Sam. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't think in my whole entire life I've ever gone four weeks without drinking. Not within a drop. Not as a child. When I was (laughs) post pre 15. Yeah. And Jill, when I was in Jill's womb, I didn't have a drink. <laughs> that you know about. No. <laughs> so, sorry, Jill. I'm sure you weren't drinking while you were pregnant. Uh, well, that would explain my craziness. Kidding, mum. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so what? what else? One more weekend and then I'm back on the booze. Oh. Maybe it'll change me for good. Maybe I'll never drink again. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> I wouldn't put money on that yeah, one. Yeah, I wouldn't either. No. What's going to happen the first, the first night I have a drink? You I'm have to have keep a... it to cadet together. <laughs> I can just Don't... see it already. Oh, Jesus. One gin and tonic and I'll be all sloshy. You'll be like in your Fiji trip where you're spinning around the pole <laughs> screaming, play Justin Bieber. <laughs> she that tells that story me. in another podcast. You have to hear that. That will be me. But yeah, besides from that, um, not a hell of a lot to report on. Mm. Well, my face doesn't look like an infected butthole anymore. No, it looks good. Is it just a little... It's sl- like a clear kind of... Yeah. Bandage. silicone bandage. It's supposed to help with the scar. Yeah, because Caroline had um, skin cancer in her nose, if you haven't heard the previous podcast. Yeah. So you got that taken out. Had a big chunk of my nose taken out, which is always fun. What does it look like underneath that bandage? I don't actually want to... Oh. Well, I have to peel it off to show you, but... Um, it just looks, well, it's still a bit red. It's been three weeks today, actually. Um, it's still a bit red and it's just kind of like a line of a scar. I've got these like silicone things that I'm going to put mm-hmm. on them that's supposed to get rid of the scar. So we'll see. But my advice is if you have some weird ass bump on your face or anywhere else in your body for that matter, go get that shit checked out because, oh my God, I never in a million years. Knows. Never thought. That scares me about how much I lie in the sun in the summer. Like, yeah. I don't wear sunblock. Well, Bob Marley died of skin cancer. What? Yeah. What? Yes. That's what he died of. So it's like it doesn't, people, a lot of people go, oh, well, you're a super white bitch. So, you know, <laughs> of course you got skin cancer. But it's like, yeah. it doesn't actually matter. And I find that people that have darker skin tend to be more likely to die from it because they don't pick it up as fast. So it's like they, they ignore it. The doctors don't pick up on it. And yeah. That's so. me. I'm always like, oh, I don't burn. So I don't need to wear sunblock. It's like, well, 10 years down the track, you're probably going to regret that, Lulu. Yeah. 40% of Kiwis. Oh. So on a happier topic, should we <laughs> talk? This is, I think we're probably just depressing people right now, are we? <laughs> no, we're, we're happy. We're good. I've got a new obsession. It's mm-hmm. a, well, it's actually a hobby. <laughs> yeah. Horoscopes. So I'm astrology. Obs- I'm obsessed. I'll, I'll get my flat round and go, right, 
gather around, guys. Horoscope time. I've got an app on my phone and I'll read them out to everyone. I used to like base my dating decisions on people's horoscopes. Yeah. Or people, yeah, their astrological signs. I have a friend who does exactly that and she's like, oh my God, no, I, I'm not compatible with him. I can't, yeah. I can't date him. I would like literally find out what time of day they're born, where they're born, put it into like this software and <laughs> align their chart with mine. And it was like, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't date them because of this. So. If I did that, I'd be even more picky than I am already with guys. So there's no <laughs> chance I should do that. <laughs> well, I did it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do they know when, when you're compatible with a certain sign? So I think, I mean, a big thing is you're most compatible with the same kind of element that your sign oh. is. So there's, there's fire, there's water, there's earth, and there's air. So Water signs... Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Yeah. So those three are the most compatible with each other. Yeah. Because you kind of understand each other. Water signs tend to be kind of emotional. They have tempers. So they both can go at each other and then be fine. They kind of get each other. I'm a water sign. I'm a Scorpio. Yeah. It says (laughs) water signs are exceptionally emotional and ultra sensitive. That is not me. They are highly intuitive and they can be as mysterious as the ocean itself. Water signs love profound conversation and inti- intimacy. They really do anything openly and are always there to support their loved ones. Doesn't yeah, I don't sound? think that's necessarily true about Scorpios. My mother's a Scorpio. Scorpio's got a sting. <laughs> My dad's a Scorpio and we will headbutt. If yeah. we have an opinion, if he has an opinion and I have an opinion, Franco and I, boof. Yeah. Yeah, so I think... Your most, then, then there's what? There's the fire signs. That's what I am. So I, I'm a Sag. Like my partner and Saggies are very like Pollyannas, optimistic. So um, it's passionate, dynamic, and temperamental. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty much me. <laughs> they get yeah. angry quickly. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen me get angry? No, I actually haven't, but I can imagine it. Yeah. Oh, it'd be good. <laughs> I feel sorry for Grant. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, you know, it's interesting. Is he's a fire sign as well, and he backs the fuck off with me. Though he Does he? His, he stands his ground. That's, That's good. You don't yeah. want to push over. No, no. He's he's one of the few men that I have not been able to walk all over, So, which is probably That's why good. I'm staying with him. Yeah. <laughs> What's, uh, what are earth signs? What, what are they? So earth signs are like, um, so there's Virgo, there's Capricorn, and Taurus. So they're very kind of grounded. They're a bit materialistic. They're into success. They like money. They like the finer things in life. Um, very kind of driven types and very down to yeah. earth. Um, yeah. Tauruses are the most fucking stubborn people you will ever meet. And I can tell you that because I have two daughters <laughs> and a brother that are all st- <laughs> Tauruses. And holy shit, if they don't want to do something, they will not do it. But they also are very caring and sweet. Um, like, what are the other Virgos? Virgos are very, oh, my God, Virgos are anal retentive. They really are. And it, I mean, the thing is, is that, yeah, and they're lovely and they really care about people, but they're very perfectionist. Mm-hmm. And Capricorns, like, I've got planets in Capricorn, and they're super driven. And, yeah, if you piss them off, you'll know. <laughs> like, you Whoa. should... They've Capricorns and Scorpios, I think, are, yeah. They're, I think they're like the highest rates of serial killers as well. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Here's the new yeah. future. If you piss them off, they will kill you. Um, <laughs> what about the air signs? Air signs. So that's um, what? Gemini. Uh, Libra. Aqu- Libra and Aquarius. So yeah. they're, I don't know, Geminis? Geminis are lovely. They can be really nice. They also can be so full of shit. It's not funny. <laughs> they can be... They'll just, yeah, they will talk and talk and talk and drive you insane. Or like certain Geminis I get along with great. Like my mother-in-law's a Gemini and I adore her and we get along absolutely perfect. But then I know other Geminis that have driven me insane. Like they will just, yeah, talk until you want to fucking strangle them to make them shut up. (laughs) And they're flaky as hell. They can be. Oh, I hate flaky Flaky. people. Donald Trump. Oh, there we go. Is the, so the best compatibility, friend wise and rom- romance wise, is to go with someone who's the same like fire or air sign with, as you. Yeah, because they understand generally. You. But then it's I like, thought opposites attract though. Yeah, well I say like, like, like say wire, water and earth make mud, right? Like yeah. yeah, or water and fire. Water puts fire out. But the whole thing is, is that it doesn't really 
matter what sign you are because you have all these different planets, right? It's not just your star sign. Otherwise, everyone in that month would all be the same. But there's Mm -hmm. all these different alignments and where you're born. It all affects things. And like your rising sign, which is like really important as well. What's that? that? Your rising sign is like the the sign that, oh God, I don't even, I can't remember exactly how it works. But it's like the most important one next to your sun sign. Like my rising sign is Virgo. So that's where I get my anal retentive know it all Mm -hmm. tendencies. But rising, yeah, Virgos also really want to help people. Um, But so, yeah, can people like you're a Scorpio, but I bet you would have planets and a lot of other stuff that would make you a bit different. I'd say you've definitely got some fire. I'll do your chart and I'll tell you. Yes. But we'll give you like certain signs. What else? Who have I not mentioned to see you don't feel left out? Aries. Aries are fiery as fuck. <laughs> I could be an Aries. I have so <laughs> many friends that are Aries. Like I get along with Aries great because we both go rah, 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 at each other and then we're done and we're over it. But they're kind of like the youngest star sign. So they tend to be, they make a lot of mistakes in life. They tend to butt their head against the wall quite a bit. I already talked about Tauruses. I talked about Geminis. So then Cancer. Cancers are real homebodies. Um, Cancers are lovely. They're really like caring, caring, nurturing people. Um, but they can be real, st- not sticks in the mud, but they just want to stay home a lot. Yeah. Oh. But not all of them. It's all yeah. different. Apparently, cancers tend to have this distinctive kind of crazy laugh, though I don't think that's always the case. Oh, my God. I literally was with someone who was a cancer on the weekend, and they had a weird laugh. Yeah, because they're ruled by the moon. So apparently, they have some like lunar crazy laugh or something. Um, what's after cancer? And then it's Leo. I love Leos. Like my partner's a Leo and they're fiery and they'll just, they, I have a lot of friends that are Leos. So Leos tend to, they just tell you like it is. So yeah, say it how it is. Yeah, that's say a good it how trait. it is, which is, that's how I am too. So I totally get that. That's absolutely fine. And Leos are very loyal and they'll do anything for you. Um, then there's Libras. Libras are very kind of, Libras are into fairness and justice. A lot of them tend to be um, lawyers and in the kind of like, legal um field and yeah libras are lovely people and they tend to be quite good looking libras as well apparently because they're ruled by venus um and did i talk about scorp is scorpio's next scorpio's yeah give me all the dates (laughs) scorpios are very they tend to be very psychic they're very good at reading people. They'll just see right I think I'm people. quite good at reading people. Yeah. They um, tend to, what else? If you piss them off, holy shit, you know. Um, but they do, they tend to be quite nurturing and they'll look after people. They're not like total selfish assholes. Um, and what? They tend to be highly intelligent. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, they do. They, I don't know Scorpios about Scorpios tend to be smart. Um, and they tend, Scorpios are known for being very good in bed. Yeah, they're supposed to be great lovers. Yeah, they. Uh, and then there's Sagittarius, which that's like my thing. And Sagittarius are very fiery, and they just want to learn all the time, and they're very optimistic, and they just kind of like are very trusting, and they want to have fun. But if they don't like you, they're like, "Fuck off, get away from me." And they they can be a bit of opportunists, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Capricorns, Capricorns are very goal driven. Capricorns are supposed to be very good in bed as well. They're kind of known for that. And Capricorns tend to reverse age. So they seem like old people when they're young and they get younger as they grow oh, up, which is like really Benjamin interesting. Button. Yeah. They're like little old men and women when they're <laughs> kids. And then as they get older, they get younger and younger. Um, and they tend to be very, they tend to be intelligent. They kind of be, can be arrogant know-it-alls is the thing with Capricorns. Then there's Aquariuses. Aquariuses are very, I don't know, male Aquariuses tend to piss me off because they can be quite pedantic. But I think that's just my experience. Um, Do you, when you meet people, often ask what star sign they are? Yeah. If you're and like, I'm good at hmm. guessing them as well. Really? Yeah. Which always oh, I need to do more research. See, all I've been doing is reading out the horoscope. So there's more to it. Oh, there's so much more to it. So, I'm going to do a test tonight. Yeah. And then there's Pisces. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Aquarius can be lovely. Like I've got girlfriends that are Aquariuses and they tend to be alternative and they're really into kind of like humanitarian things and they want like equal rights for people. They don't tend to be racist. They're very kind of open, yeah. lovely people. Um, and then there's Pisces and Pisces, like my dad's a Pisces. Pisces are water as well. You're quite compatible with Pisces. Um, and Pisces are quite artistic and they're very sensitive and they're um, 
they're really good people. They tend to be nurturing as well, but they, and they tend to have quite good senses of humor. So yeah, it's also just a little rundown of everyone. Um, yeah, but I think it's like a lot of people go, oh, horoscopes are bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's just too general. If you really want to look at it, you got to look at it deeper. But like, for instance, I've got tons of clients from India mm-hmm. and they all, they like so many of them have arranged marriages and the horoscope part is so important. The astrology, you have to be a good match. Really? When they get matched? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, it's like, oh, sorry, everything else is perfect, but this is not a good match. And yeah, but it's what's interesting interesting is their marriages tend to last longer. They have lower rates of divorce and they tend to be quite happy because they've matched the horoscope signs. Yeah. Well, they have like there's so many factors that they look at. All right. So so I need to find either a cancer, a Scorpio or a Pisces. Ideally. If you're listening, Louisa DD on Instagram. (laughs) If you're one of those signs. Slide into the DMs. (laughs) And Yeah. Be able to handle a very strong woman. <laughs> Good <laughs> style. <laughs> so I was watching this movie the other night. Um, and this guy, or, well, I can't even remember the name of the movie. God, I swear to God, my brain has fucking died. <laughs> what, do you ever feel like this? Or yeah, no, of course constantly. not. You're, you're 24. <laughs> Your brain is amazing. Um, yeah, but they, they did this scene. It was this movie with, what's her name? Scarlett Johansson. And it's like about her kind of like um, hen's night or bachelorette party. And they talked about this story called The Sad Astronaut. And I thought it, it just sparked a memory of this story. Now, the people that this involved are still alive. So I want to be kind about this. But it's a really, it was very titillating at the time. And I think it's still really interesting. So... It's a story of this woman named Lisa Nowak. You know, she was a NASA astronaut. She went up in the space shuttle. She was married. She had three young kids. She was also a flight officer in the Navy. um, And she was very accomplished. But she was having an affair with a guy she worked with, with another astronaut. Ooh, up in in space. Yeah, I don't know if they were up in space or whatever. But according to what I've read, they were having an affair for two years. And then the guy calls it off with her the guy she was having the affair yeah the guy she's having the affair with ends things and so she's totally distraught she still had a key to his apartment so she breaks into his apartment she breaks into his emails and reads his emails and finds out that he's seen this other woman and that they were very obviously hot and heavy and the woman mentions that she is flying to florida that night so this woman gets in her car. She brings with her <laughs> a trench coat, a black wig, pepper spray, a BB gun, rope, trash bags, an eight inch knife, and adult diapers. And then, <laughs> uh, okay. Apparently, in space, you have to wear diapers, right? If you go for a wee, it's going to float oh, all yeah. over the place. So astronauts wear diapers in space. Oh, so she sense. apparently wore diapers so that she could drive and drive all the way through the night without stopping to meet this woman as her flight lands. This woman had no idea who she was, like knew that he was seeing someone else before her, but that he had ended things. So the woman gets off her flight. Her name is Colleen Shipman, right? So she gets off her flight. And Shipman. Sh- shipman okay. as in like a just thinking night- diapers shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm back oh that's a good <laughs> but she got some crap about that um so the woman lands in orlando she gets out she gets goes to her car and she noticed this woman was following her that looked kind of funny she's like in a trench coat and this wig and so she gets a bit freaked out and like kind of runs to her car. And the woman comes running after her and starts banging on the window. Um, and she was like, help me, help me. I need your help. You know, I need a ride. And so the woman rolls down her window going like, what the hell? But I think she already, she had a real dodgy feeling. Anyways, yeah. the woman sprays her in the face with pepper spray. <gasps> and so she takes off. Yeah. And tried to get into the car. Um, so the woman takes off, um, calls the police. They catch her. And she's like trying to throw in the rubbish her like gun and knife and all and her trench coat and wig. Um, Apparently she was wearing an adult diaper at the time. (laughs) 
Oh, my God. she had driven, like... the police are like, clearly we know what you're doing. She drove 900 miles just overnight. I think it took her, like, 14 hours. Um, And they catch her with all this stuff. So they charge her with um, attempted murder and kidnapping. And it became huge media. I'm like, have you heard the story? No. No, you haven't. I feel like it should be made into a movie. Yeah. So, anyway, she, she got arrested. She got put on bail. I mean, poor woman... Has everything going for her. She's an astronaut. Yeah. She's got this great career. She's married, three kids. I don't know. Like, some people say she was separated and it wasn't actually an affair per se. She was still married. But other people say, no, she was definitely married. It had been going on for a long time. But it just, it ruined her life. And she... Did she, she got put in jail? She was, I think she was held on jail, in jail. I think she only spent like two days What well, Would that be jail. attempted... Or, like, intent to murder or something? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, all she did was spray her with pepper spray and carry it in the car, but with the items she had, it's, like, There's something trash really, bags, knives, yeah. and, you know, like, yeah, I think she had, like, a mallet as well. <laughs> like, it's, What's like, a mallet? like, a hammer. A hammer? Yeah. Sometimes, oh, like, well. a big hammer. Okay, she clearly was not going there to spray she, with pepper spray. Yeah, wanted to get rid of this woman, and... I think, I mean, all I can think is she had like a breakdown and thought she could get rid of her and then... And then everything would be fine with this other guy. Yeah, that this guy would go back to her. But yeah. So anyway, she only spent two days in jail um, and she ended up, I think it was like, um, she got a year's probation and I think it was put down... Um, I wonder move. what her husband thought and also the guy that she was having the affair with. Well, That'd it, be like, you are a crazy but Well, her husband divorced her. And the guy she was having an affair with, it like ruined his life as well. Because yeah. he was fired or dis- discharged. He was no longer an astronaut. And I think, I mean, most people who are astronauts are in the military. So he was discharged from the military. She was discharged from the military. I think they were all, even the woman who he was involved with, the woman who was like attacked, I think, either was like, severely demoted or yeah it wasn't good so just ruined all of their lives ruined all of their lives and the woman now lisa nowak is i think she just lives very quietly and has a job and yeah like i just feel terrible for her um and the other two they had actually ended up getting married and they moved to alaska they have a child together and uh, the woman who was attacked um, is now a writer. And I think she's written about what happened to her. And she said that, you know, finally, she's kind of found peace with it. Wait, the, the two who were having the affair got married? The, the woman who was attacked by the other woman. Yeah. The woman, Colleen Shipman. Um, and the guy, what's his, his name was? That she was having the affair with. Yeah. Got Bill, married. Bill, God, Ella Ellif- I can't even say the olefine, olefine. It's O E F E L E I N. There's a lot of E's in there. Olaf. Olaf. Olafine. Olafine. Anyways, he was discharged. He, yeah, like it ruined all of their lives, really. As soon as I think of astronaut stories, do yeah. you know what I think of? What that? Um, I say plane, spaceship that at some point is going to go to i don't know one of the planets mm. and you can get a one like a one-way ticket on it and pe- yeah. people have like accepted their seats on it and they'll leave their families behind and wives and kids and partners and m- brothers and sisters and mums and dads etc and they're just going to jump on this one way to mars yeah spaceship Which you're talking about the real the real day yeah like yeah. In real life yeah, it's weird, well, like, isn't it? Isn't it just the weirdest thing, like, knowing that you're getting on this one-way thing, like, you're not coming back, and you're just saying, bye, bye, family, bye, earth, bye, bye, life. They're you can't be happy. They're not that into their families. No, like, they're like, <laughs> they're like, catch flights, not feelings, literally. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I guess some people are all obsessed with, like, I mean, I guess it's like people that went to Australia when there was nothing there or people that went out west in America. Some people want to be those like pioneers that go Mm. somewhere new and they like the, you know, a lot of people think that the world here is going to end and yeah, it's interesting. I wouldn't do it. The furthest I'd do is be book a one-way flight to Europe and that's just a one-way flight (laughs) back if I get get homesick. 
Can you actually book a one-way flight with pa- with the passport? I've got an that? Italian passport. Oh, you lucky. So nice. I can. Ew. But no, I don't think I'd be jumping on that one-way spaceship to Mars. No. No, I wouldn't either. How and could you just leave everything behind, knowing that you're clearly not coming back? And what kind of shopping is there going to be? You <laughs> Nothing. Know? And food. Food. Is it all Food's be a biggie. Dehydrated. Like, just you know jerky. I mean? I'm just imagining all you'd eat is jerky and like and potatoes. <laughs> jerky and like like packet sealed food. Yeah. Sounds I'm just getting depressed thinking about uh, that. No, thank now. you. So it's been pointed out to me that I mentioned I was gonna give some tips on how to get over a breakup and I haven't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I thought I'd do that now. And I think that I mean I've had this happen myself where you get your heart broken and you just think about it all the time and you think about that person and it's really interesting it's like we are hardwired to be uber sensitive to rejection so if someone rejects us something in our brain and in our dna goes on like high alert and like it's basically like whoop whoop you're gonna die (laughs) because in primitive times if you got kicked out of the tribe or you were rejected you did die. Like, you know, you basically tried to survive on your own, but it wasn't likely. So I think that's part of the whole obsessive um, component to when you get your heart broken. So Mm -hmm. I thought I'd give some tips on how to get through that because I'll get people that are literally still obsessed with people 20 years later. Really? Yeah. They have spent that long obsessing over someone. It's so different for people. I like some people will like wallow in in the sadness and the heartbreak and then some people will just go right pick yourself up moving on next i feel like i i'm the type of person that i'll be sad for for a couple days and then i'll go right okay pick yourself up move on like how long you know you can be sad to a certain degree but there's no point being absolutely depressed in bed for months yeah and i think that i think it's important to kind of process your pain and you need to kind of feel it Because a lot of people just pretend it's not happening Mm. or they drink and eat and do drugs and and try to numb themselves with everything but actually... Go out all the time when it's like you actually need to deal with how you're feeling sad and be okay with feeling that pain. Yeah, exactly. So that's a big one. It's like having to kind of process it. And people don't like to do that. That feels horrible. But the faster you do it, the sooner you do it, the faster the process will mm-hmm. be. You'll get through it. And also people think that, um, you know, like people are going to judge them considering, you know, how long they've been together or what the circumstances are. But it's like heartbreak can be anything. You could be with the person three months or 30 years and it can still feel the same, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know for me, like the one and only time I've gotten dumped and my heart really broken I was so traumatized over it. Like I cried every day for a month and I was like, and I think it was really the whole rejection thing and also the embarrassment because it was done on my birthday and everyone knew and it was like, it was horrific. So, but I think it's like, because I let myself kind of wallow in that, then I got over it pretty quick and I was like dating a new guy within a month. So yeah, get (laughs) you. So I think a big thing is to avoid contact. Mm-hmm. And out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. No, like you've got to block them on social media. No, you just can't be friends. If you're obsessed with someone, you cannot just be friends with them. I mean, sometimes you, like if you have children together, you still have to have them in your lives. But I think the more you can kind of avoid seeing them with their new partner or what they're doing or how much fun they're having without you, it, the better because I think it just re-triggers all those memories and all those feelings so that's really important is yeah and no still fucking them excuse me but no, <laughs> you know you what I mean do that if you want closure you gotta start with your legs I'm sorry <laughs> but you know what I mean? quote of 2018 know, it is it's true though I think it's like people still they'll keep being the booty call they'll still sleep with that person and it's like and they're like oh I don't have feelings and it's fine it's like well you, you're still gonna have some type of attachment just Stop riding. Yeah. <laughs> Stop riding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the rodeo, honey. <laughs> um, so you got to, the other thing that's really good is creating a, an aversion to that person. Like for me, would it be a good way to do that is stick Donald Trump's head on the person every time I went to think about them because then I'd be like, <laughs> like, so I think it's like, 
Imagine the person you're still thinking about or you can't really get over with the worst case of STDs. Like imagine five different STDs at once. Ooh. Like you should see Louise's face right now. They have <laughs> oh, never. Out, like, yeah. They've never washed. They have sores. There's pus. Oh, oh, like, okay. Yeah. Just make them, make them disgusting and keep doing that every time your brain goes, oh, oh I don't want to take it. Think about that. Um, I think another thing is date other people like get out there yes get back on the horse get back on the horse the best way to get over someone is get on someone else yeah or under or over or however you want to do it yeah and i think don't talk about your ex to that new person i think that's really bad that is the giveaway when you're on a date and they're bringing up their ex or talking about them it's like i when i was seeing a guy not that long ago he just everything would somehow revolve or like come back to his ex and they were on off for seven years. And I was just like, you're you're clearly not over her because you keep talking about her mate. It is. Yeah. That's, that is a huge red flag. Yeah. So, um, and what else? Oh, there's lots of other things. There's some really good books. The books I recommend for getting over an ex is, um, there's a really good one called, Getting past your breakout, breakup, your breakout, yeah. getting past your breakup, how to turn a devastating loss into the best thing that ever happened to you by Susan J. Elliott. That's an excellent book on breakups. And then there's another one that's really good called it's called a breakup because it's broken. The smart girls yes. breakup buddy by it's like by the guy who wrote he's just not that into you. Oh, yeah. And it's got it's lots of stories. Great film. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. And it's a great book. And it's yeah. so true. Yeah, but I think it's like so many people think that um, you know, like oh, this breakup, like yes, it is sad and everything, but you're breaking up for a reason. Like there's yeah. clearly something that's not working, or feelings aren't there. And people who try and go back a second, third, fourth time, oh. it doesn't work. Don't recycle. It no. does not work. No, like maybe for another year, and then the same thing happens. Like it just. And who wants to be with someone who doesn't really want to be with you? That is exactly. the most horrible if thing If someone's ever. breaking up with you because they don't know if they want to be with you, then they clear you're not yeah. their world. See ya later. Yeah. Don't put yourself through that. You want to find someone who is just... Obsessed with you. Yeah. Maybe not obsessed. Okay, yeah. yeah. I know. That's I said that too quick. Yeah. I want someone who's obsessed with me. Said I don't. like a Scorpio. I yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> you would like... Yeah. If a guy became obsessed with you, he'd be like, see you the fuck later. I'd be like, yeah. oh my God, catch it. You are a clinger. <laughs> so next time we're going to tell some stories because we've been getting some really cool stories. Yes. On WT at our, our email, WT stories and advice at gmail.com. So if you've got a good story, you can send it there or you also can send it on Facebook. Yeah, or you can well. DM us on Instagram, direct message. Yeah. Louisa, L-U-I-S-A-D-D. <laughs> Why am I laughing at that? It's my last um, name. It doesn't, <laughs> it's nothing like, else. It's <laughs> Trust me. God, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> and I am Caroline Cranshaw, I think, at Caroline Cranshaw and in Instagram. You can see a picture of my munted face right after my. Thought you were going to say you, you really can, want. <laughs> you can see a picture of my uh, boobs because we're just talking <laughs> yeah. about double D's. <laughs> I don't have a double D in my name, but I have them other places. Anyways, no. Um, <laughs> and leave a leave a review. Only leave a review if you're going to do five stars. Yeah. Otherwise, Otherwise, trot on. Yeah. Go listen to some other fucking boring podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Or if there's any topics that you want us to talk about or anything you need advice about, um, yeah, I'm a total fucking know-it-all, as I like to say. So, um, And you're a hypnotherapist, so you do know your shit. Yeah, yeah. I've trained forever. And I'm actually starting a school yeah. uh, training other people on how to be this. So I yeah. just ask lots of questions. <laughs> cool. That's us. Out. <laughs> <laughs>